Hello, welcome back to the VDC space. Today we're going to be doing a basic design of a guardhouse. We're, go we're just going to keep it simple. And as you can see on this picture, we're going to generate concrete V-shaped columns and also a large concrete roof running above the guardhouse itself. And then we're going to add some families like turnstiles and barriers in order for us to add context to our entrance. Now, without further ado, let's jump into Revit. So here we are in Revit 23. So I'm going to open up the new construction template. And then I'm just going to untick these boxes and then extend your views. After extending your views, make sure you click on them and then you extend the, the reference so that you can see anything that you model right in the middle. Perfect. Now we're going to place our grid. So we're going to place 10 of them, which are spaced at uh, 3,000 millimeters. So you're going to go to pick lines and then offset, set it to 3,000 millimeters. And then you're going to place them like this. I'm just going to center them like this and then I'm going to pick my grids again and then I'm going to place the ones that are running across and then double click on here and rename this to A, go to grid again, pick lines and then uh, 2500 millimeter offset and then I'm going to place two more like this. And then we're going to model our guardhouse between grid six and seven. And then in order for us to do that, uh, we're going to use, I want us to use the structural uh, plan instead of the architectural floor plan. Uh, but before that, we're going to have to go to the south elevation and then extend the levels and our grids. So we're going to set this one to 3000 millimeters and then add another level, which is set at uh, 6000 millimeters. And then this one, we're going to rename it to 00-foundation, enter. And then this one is going to be 01-guardhouse, roof, enter. And then this one is going to be 02-concrete roof. Perfect. And now we're going to go back to the foundation plan. So we're going to go to, we're going to use the structural plans. And as you can see, we only have concrete roof. So we're going to go to view and then under view, we're going to go to plan views and then structural plan. And then we're going to select these two and then make sure this box is checked. Do not duplicate the existing views. So you're going to say, okay. And now we're going to use the foundation structural plan in order for us to model everything. So between grid six, six and seven, we're going to place our guard house. So we're going to go to architecture and then under wall, we're going to drop down and then we're going to choose this one wall retaining 300 concrete. It's easier to, uh, to edit. And then the top constraint, we're going to set it to guard house roof. And then the base offset, we're going to set it to minus 500 millimeters. So we're going to select a rectangle. And then between grid six and seven, we're going to place our rectangle like this. Perfect. And now we're going to select our wall, go to edit type, duplicate, and rename it to 230 millimeter brickwork. Okay. And then go to edit and then set the thickness to 230. And then the material, we're going to type in brick. And then we're going to drop down and load in expose masonry and say apply okay and then okay apply okay go to your 3d uh, view so you're going to set this to realistic and this is what we have so go back to your foundation plan we're going to add strip footing under the walls so you're going to go to structure under foundation you're going to choose wall edit type duplicate 900 by 300 millimeter SF for strip footing, okay. And then the width, you're going to set it to 900. The foundation thickness, you're going to set it to 300. Apply, okay. Now you're going to select your walls like this. Go to a 3D view. This is what we have. 
go back to the foundation plan and then we're going to add our uh, foundation slab so under foundation you're going to go to slab edit type duplicate you're going to say 150 millimeter foundation slab and then ok and then edit set the thickness to 150 the material you're going to say concrete then you're going to drop down and say concrete cast in C2. OK, OK, apply, OK. And then you're going to select your rectangle and then place it within the bounds of your walls. Then you're going to say finish. Go to your 3D view and this is what we have. Now back to the foundation plan. I'm just going to remove this span uh, annotation. We're going to add our doors and windows. So you're going to go to door and then drop down. And then I'm going to choose this one, 910 by 2210, and then place it on the side. I'm going to select my wall and then make sure it's 1000 millimeter offset from this wall. So I'm going to say 1000. And then I'm going to pick my windows, drop down, and then choose this one, 1360 by 1210. And then I'm going to place it right in the middle like this. And then I'm going to place it also this side. But for this side, I'm going to go to the guardhouse roof and then select my window and then make sure it's 1000 millimeter offset from this wall. Go to the 3D view and this is what we have. Now we are almost done. So we're going to have to place a concrete roof on top of this guardhouse. So in order for us to do that, we're going to go to the guardhouse roof and then we're going to go to structure. Under structure, we're going to choose floors and then we're going to you're going to go with edit type, duplicate and say 200 millimeter RC for reinforced concrete slab. And you're going to say OK and then edit under structure and then remove these layers. And then you will be only left with one layer and then you're going to edit the thickness and make it 200. The material is fine as precast concrete. So you're going to say, OK, apply, OK. And then you're going to randomly place your rectangle like this and then make sure it's 300 millimeter offset from the exterior of the walls. So you're going to say 300 millimeter from all the sides. Perfect. Now we're going to make this concrete roof slope towards that direction. So we're going to select slope arrow and then place it right in the middle like this and make sure the arrow is facing upwards in this context, in this uh, view. So we're going to select the arrow and then we're going to change the under constraints. We're going to change the specify from height at tail to slope and then the slope we're going to set it to minus five degrees. And then we're going to say finish edit mode and say attach. Go to the 3D view and as you can see, this is what we have. We are basically done with our, with our guard house. The next step is you're going to go back to the foundation plan and then we're going to add concrete bases for our V-shaped roofs. So in order for us to do that, we're going to go with foundation, isolated and say we're going to load them in metric library uk contents we're gonna go with structural foundation footing rectangular open and then we're gonna place one on this grid select it edit type and then duplicate and then we're gonna rename this one 2500 millimeter these ones are fine like that and then we're gonna change the the length from 1800 to 2500 millimeter apply and then okay and then we're going to copy it and then skip one grid, copy it to this one, and then copy it to this one also. And then you're going to copy it to this grid. And then the last one also. Perfect. Now go to your 3D view. This is what you have. Now you're going to select your concrete bases. And then you're going to offset them height height offset from level you're going to set it to minus 500 millimeters and now we're going to generate our v-shaped columns that are going to support the concrete roof that's running above everything so we're going to go back to the foundation plan go to file new family and then you're going to drop down and say metric structural column open and then the width you're going to set it to 
2,500, actually 1,200 millimeters, and then the depth is fine at, at uh, 500 millimeters. Go to the front elevation, set the upper reference level to 6,000 millimeters, enter, and then you're going to place your extrusion. Go to create extrusion. And then you're going to place a horizontal line from this reference plane to this one. And then draw a diagonal line to the top until you meet the upper reference level. And then make sure the angle is set at 60 degrees. And then you're going to take it to the left by 1200. And then take it downwards diagonally until you meet the middle reference plane. Press escape. Select these three lines. Go to mirror pick axis pick the middle reference plane, and then everything is copied to the other side. Finish, and then go to the floor plane, lower reference level, drag your extrusion to the reference uh, planes until, and then lock it. Drag it to this side, and then lock it. Open up the 3D view, and this is what you have. So you can select your column, apply the material to this. You're gonna say concrete, and then you're gonna drop down and then set it to concrete precast, load it in, apply, OK. And now, when you change the level of detail, as you can see, this is what you have. So you're going to load it in into your project and close. I'm not going to save this. I already did. So this is what we have. Go back to your foundation plan. Under structure, go to column. Set the column to vertical column. And your constraints are set to height. And then your top level is set to concrete roof. To change its orientation, you're going to press space bar. And then you're going to set the orientation like this and then place it on top of your bases. Go to your 3D view. And this is what you have. Now you're going to select your columns. And then the base offset, you're going to set it to minus 500 millimeters. Perfect. And now the next thing is we're going to place our pavings and also our roads. Go back to the foundation plan. And then we're going to go with a structure. We're going to select floors and then go to edit type, duplicate. And then we're going to name this one pave and then OK, edit, and then set the thickness to 50 millimeters. And then the material we're going to type in pave. Then we're going to drop down and then we're going to use these brick pavers. We're going to load it in, apply, OK, OK, and then apply, OK. You're going to place a rectangle like this from this grid until this one. And then we're going to adjust the offset. So you're going to select this one, drag it to the right, and then make sure it's 500 millimeter offset from this grid. Perfect. And then this one, you're going to drag it to the outside. And then make sure it's 500 millimeter offset from this grid. Perfect. And then we're going to drag these ones uh, like this. And then we're going to select it. And then make sure from this grid is 2,000 millimeter offset. Same thing this side. And then make sure it's 2,000 millimeter offset from this grid. Perfect. And now we're going to add another one. So you're going to select the rectangle and then place them randomly uh, around these uh, columns and bases. So this one, we're going to adjust it. So from, from this grid, we're going to set it to 500. And then this one also, this side, we're going to set it to 500. And then we're going to apply... We're going to say fillet arc. We're going to apply the fillet here. And then we're going to make it 300 millimeters. Perfect. So we're going to check this radius and then make sure it's set at 300 millimeters. And then select these two, these two lines to apply the fillet. And then this side, we're going to apply the fillet this side. So this we have to adjust it. So I'm going to select it like this and then move it 
so that it becomes on the same, uh, it becomes aligned with this paving right here. So I'm going to select all these lines and then copy them to this uh, grid like this. And then in order for it not to clash with the foundation slab, I have to add another rectangle around the, the walls of our guard house like this. And also I'm going to have to add another uh, box in order for it not to clash with our concrete V-shaped columns. So I'm going to say in order for me to see the base of our columns, I'm going to set the graphics to wireframe. And as you can see, the lines have appeared. So I'm going to place my rectangle like this. And then I'm going to select this rectangle and then copy it to the other V-shaped columns. Perfect. So the next thing is I'm going to extend this paving and then take it to the outside of this of this uh, V-shaped column. So I'm going to make it a thousand and I think it's fine like that. And then say finish, go to the 3D view and this is what we have. Now I'm going to add roads to this. So I'm going to go back to the foundation level and then I'm going to say flow again, edit type, duplicate and then I'm going to name this one road. OK, edit. The thickness is fine. I'm going to set the material to asphalt. I'm going to type in asphalt. And then drop down. I'm going to use this one, asphalt pavement, light gray. I'm going to load it in. Apply. OK. OK. Apply. And then OK. And then I'm going to place my rectangle like this from this point and until this point. Perfect. And then I'm going to say finish, go to my 3D view, and this is what we have. Now I'm going to place my concrete column that's going to be sitting on top of our V-shaped columns. In order for us to do that, we're going to go to the west elevation, and then we're going to reduce the scale and make it 1 is to 50, just to th see things more clearly. Extend my levels. Extend my grids. And then I'm going to go to architecture. Under roof, I'm going to drop down roof by extrusion. Set the reference level to reference plane to grid one. OK. The level is set to concrete roof. OK. And then I'm going to start from where this concrete V-shaped column starts to this end. And then I'm going to take it uh, to, to the further right by another 2,000 millimeters. And then I'm going to draw a diagonal line at 45 degrees and make it 3,000. 500 millimeters and then i'm going to extend it to the left on this side and make the total length make the total length 12,000 millimeters actually i'm going to make it uh, 10,000 so i'm going to i'm going to reduce it make it 10,000 and then i'm going to say edit type duplicate so I'm going to drop down, choose roof generic 400, edit type, duplicate, 1,200 millimeter concrete roof. OK, and then edit, and then change the thickness to 1,200. The material, I'm going to make it concrete. And then I'm going to choose concrete precast. OK, OK, apply, and then OK. And then I'm going to say finish. So it says I can't make an extrusion. So I'm going to have to remove these extra lines. And then I'm going to have to join this and say finish edit mode. So and then I'm going to drag this roof up until it's on the top of our V-shaped columns. Go to the 3D view. And this is what you have. Obviously, you have to adjust the length. So in order for us to do that, go to the south elevation. Place your reference plane on the outside, like this. And then temporarily, we're going to use this as our reference. So we're going to offset them by 1,000 millimeter from this last grid. So I'm going to say 1,500. And then this side also, I'm going to select it and then offset it by another 1,500 millimeters. And then I'm going to select my roof and then drag it towards that reference plane. And then select my reference plane and then I'm going to remove them. Go to the 3D view and this is what we have. We are almost done. 
And now for in order for us to add more context to this, we're going to add tensiles and also barriers. So I'm going to go to the foundation plan, just remove this annotation of the spans. And then I'm going to use, uh, when I go to BIM object, I'm going to leave the link in the description. So for the ten style, you can go to BIM object and then down, download it. So I'm going to say deselect all and then select only Revit. Download selection, OK. And then I'm going to open it, upgrade the model. And then load into project and close. And then go to the foundation level. And then I'm just going to randomly place it between these two columns. I'm going to place another one this side. And then I'm going to select my tensile and make sure it's 200 millimeter offset from this grid. So this one I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to make sure it's, it's 200 millimeter offset from this grid. So I'm going to say 200 millimeters. Perfect. And now I'm going to add my barriers on this side. So I'm going to go back to BIM object. And then this is our magnetic access or barrier. So I'm going to say download, deselect all. And then I'm only going to select the Revit, download. And then I'm going to say open, upgrade the model because it's from 2020. And then I'm going to load into project and close go back to the foundation plan, and then I'm going to press the space bar to change its orientation. And then I'm going to use this, re this grid as my reference. And then I'm going to place it like this, select my axis, and then change the barrier length to 3000 millimeters. And I'm just going to make it uh, 4000 actually. And then I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to say copy. And then from this grid, I'm going to copy it to this grid and go to your 3D view, this is what we have. And now we have to we have to close and not make access for anyone else. So we're going to add fencing here, but we're going to use a basic railing for this. So go to the foundation plan. And under our foundation plan, I'm going to go with railing. And then I'm going to go with 1100 millimeter and then go and say edit, duplicate. I'm not going to rename this, so OK. Baluster placement, I'm going to say edit and then set the distance from previous to 150. Apply, OK, and then set the height to 2000 millimeters. Apply, OK, and then I'm going to place it right in the middle from this column to the outside of this wall. Then I'm going to say finish. I'm going to do the same thing this side, go to railing and then from this wall to this column, I'm going to place it like that and say finish. Go to the 3D view and this is what we have. And now I'm going to place one between our 10 styles. So go to the foundation plan and then I'm going to say railing again. And then from our 10 style to 10 style, I'm going to place it like this and say finish edit mode. Go to the 3D view and this is what we have. So basically, uh, we are done with our with our guardhouse. This is how it looks when it's rendered. So yeah, I think you guys. Um, uh, I hope you guys have learned something and how you can approach these uh, types of uh, structures. Uh, try to keep it as basic as I could. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. And I hope you guys. I hope I can see you guys on the next tutorial. Peace.